Stay with us, it's time to duel, yeah! First off, we have Logan Johnson from Everett Washington. Favorite card, Thousand Dragon, a classic. He's ready to go with his rescue strategy against his opponent here. Steven Santoli from Hamilton, Ontario, playing for card five. Well, Fire Dog, once again, he is already here. He's just played in this exact seat, sitting right back down. Will he be able to hold it down? Did you just say Steven's favorite card is Flame Bell Fire Dog? Color me surprised. I do love Flame Bells. I know one of the most popular Time Wizard formats is going to be that March 2020 format where Flame Bell Fire Dog was at its best. Sorry, I'm a little out of breath. I didn't just run from the stage or anything to get back here in the booth with you or anything as solid. You some push-ups. It's all good. Oh, yeah. I was just, you know, exercising before the finals, getting those nerves out just like these players have. But this is going to be an epic final. We have the United States against Canada. Steven Santoli just on fire this year. Absolutely. I've been talking. I feel like I've been gassing him up since he got here. <laughs> He's just been so strong lately. And a lot of people don't give him credit because it seems like he came out of nowhere. But I've been watching him, man, because he's like friends with a lot of people I know. And he has just been constantly trying and trying. And eventually, he just got there. He just kept committing to the craft. And he's just been working really hard. And it's good to see him be rewarded. Yeah, and it's not just like a one-trick thing either. He's played multiple different decks. He you know, got popular with Exosisters. He was able to take down a remote dual YCS. Take down plenty of regionals with Exosisters. So when he went to the World Championship and Kashir wasn't going to be an option, everyone thought he was going to be on Exosisters. Switched over to Mathmech, proved himself with that deck as well. Made top eight at the World Championship this year. A feat very few players have ever managed to accomplish. And now he's back at it again here in the finals, trying to get another YCS title under his belt. But his opponent, Logan, has also been a veteran of the game, been around for quite some time, focused, and also maybe have found a way to break through. Because this is going to be his first finals, but he is ready to win that trophy. Yeah, I mean, even if you're a little bit more green to the stage, it's not like you haven't been around before. You've been playing and you've gotten up to this point. All you have to do is play one more game, play to the best of your ability. You can't get the, let the nerves get to you. Yeah, definitely. You don't want to lose because of nerves. You want to focus on your game. I always tell people, how do you keep your nerves down? You know those 10 zones, and I mean, there's more than 10 zones, but you're focused on the car the cards just right in front of you. It's just like you're playing at home on the kitchen table with your friends. But there's just a lot more lights, lots of people watching. Don't think about what's going on on the live stream. It's also, he's, you know, representing his entire country here. Yeah, he was the one no American in top four. No big deal, but they are playing for this beautiful trophy featuring another verse, Plutonia, and also an ultra rare copy of that prize card that only goes to first place. So epic, I really can't wait to see. And this is gonna be a rescue ace mirror match. We talked about how being one of the most dominant decks this weekend, and it has ended up being in the finals, even though it didn't take all the top four spots. So one of the things to talk about here with the rescue ace mirror match, even if it is a mirror match, there are some really key differences between both of these lists here. We saw in the previous round, Steven Satoli on more of the Cybers package, being able to get that extra interruption from the Terahertz play. But Logan on the pr version that I've been playing myself with the Jet Synchron and three copies of Dio Bellstar, a little bit more engine focused, trying to focus less on uh, playing through your opponent going second, having a much stronger turn one and having access to those synchro plays. Yeah, definitely. I really do like the Jet Synchron. It provides some awesome options. I mean, I'm also a little partial to Synchro Monsters to begin with. So if I can get a Baron to Floor and a Borlode Savage Dragon on the field, sign me up. But it looks like the duelists are shuffled up. They've cut each other's decks. We are mere moments away from this finals. One of these players will be the first player to become a YCS Indie Champion in over 10 years. And this city just means so much to the game. There's so many iconic things that happened here. Like Philly Luna became the first ever four-time champion in this very building. And now we're going to have to see if Steven will be able to capture another YCS win or if Logan will be able to prove himself and take the W for the United States. Looks like the players are about ready to roll. Hands are being drawn. The all-important die roll is incoming. Who goes first in the Rescue Ace Mirror match is pretty important. If you're able to get that turbulence on the field and set a bunch of cards to your back row, it will prove tough for the other Rescue Ace player to play through some of those trap cards potentially. But let's go ahead and jump into it. It's almost time to duel for the last time of the day. It's game one of the finals of YCS Indy 2023. Two hands, 12! Wow. One, I've never seen anyone. <laughs> Oh, I mean, we missed Steven's roll, but it definitely wasn't a 12. 
Yeah, I can't imagine it was. One die in each hand, rolls them to a 12 now. Logan will be going first. Man, if I rolled a 12 in the finals, I'd be like, I really need to win this. Luck is on my side. I mean, this is where I feel like Logan cared about the role a lot more than Steven did. Steven's build is really uh, a little bit more mid-range. He has a lot more to be able to utilize going second, but Logan has a lot more output if he is able to go first. And Airlifter, an excellent start here from Logan. That's going to let him add a Rescue Ace spell card from the deck to the hand. It looks like he's going to add Emergency. Yep, pretty standard line here. We didn't see an Impulse from Steven's hand here. That would have been a way to start put, like loading up some Rescue Ace monsters onto his side of the field as well. That is something that uh, Rescue Ace is pretty uh, known for. Similar to Tierlement, historically having things similar to Tierlement have, is being able to put monsters on the field during your opponent's turn when they do something. Definitely, and we see him opening up with that Jet Synchron, so he's going to be able to send it to the Graveyard to special summon the Diabell Star, the Black Witch. Oh, yeah, he's going to be able to try, attempt to protect the effect of the Turbulence here, trying to really just take advantage of the stronger opening with Jet Synchron. Maybe you're going to be able to end with Barlord Savage here. Uh, you're not going to be able to do Savage and Baron because Jet's already in the Graveyard unless you play a second copy, and I really don't imagine you are. You do not, don't imagine I'm Noir? I am not Noir. You're right. I, you saw know, it. I, I knew you would. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you looked at me and you knew, like, you're, I saw it, saw it begged me with his eyes not to say anything. <laughs> but I'm just joking. You are, is what you said. Uh, but so he's thinking about what to do next. It looks like he is going to go for that emergency. Someone needs to call an ambulance, but not for Logan. I mean, ambulance is going to come either way. <laughs> so emergency is going to let him special summon a rescue ace. Uh, turbulence, turbulence from the deck. Surprising. I'm surprised he hasn't put Hydran on the field yet. He does still have that original sinful spoils, and with the Jet Synchron gone, it's probably going to be the viable target for that. But he does. You, you were mentioning playing around stuff like Infinite Impermanence and stuff, trying to get SP Little Knight on the field, potentially to protect the Rescue Ace Turbulence, being able to chain and banish them both off the field. Yeah, it looks like he's not... Uh, because he still has the Emergency in his hand, he doesn't have to play around Infinite Impermanence here. Uh, he's going to be able to resolve the Turbulence, and then he's going to be able to prioritize making Baron instead of Savage. We'll have to see. I think he did use the emergency to summon the turbulence, though. And now he's going to yeah. set contain, extinguish, and one of the spell cards. Oh, both. Of, okay, alert yeah. and rescue. Now I don't have to guess. Sometimes they're hard to tell the difference from with the light glare that sometimes shines on them. He's going to set one, two, three, four. Okay, so this is really interesting here. He opted to not protect the turbulence. So now, which synchro is he going to go for? Because if he's. Uh, so there's anything about emergency, correct? What's that? Everything but emergency? Yeah. Well, not everything. There's no reinforce, I believe. But <laughs> it is yeah, correct. There is no reinforce. <laughs> Every one of the cards that are usually played in the Rescue Ace deck definitely set face down. Let's see. He's going to discard. The, he's, he's discarding for Jet Synchron, right? Yep. There's Pot of Prosperity going to the grave. Interesting as well. That's a card you haven't used yet. When, you, when your hand's so good, you don't have to use Pot of Prosperity. Synchros for Baron. It only gets the one half of the Jet Synchron, not going to be able to go for that Borload Savage Dragon. So now he's going to use Sinful Spoils to send the Diabell Star. Going to get the Hydrant. Now he's going to be able to activate the Alert as well. So two free searches potentially. Thank you for a second. Okay. An Ash Blossom would be pretty huge here. Yeah. Oh, he has the Baron though. But it would still force out yeah, the Baron. Yeah, forcing out the Baron. Which, I mean, that would mean Baron's allowed to tag out in the standby phase. Just a different monster at this point, right? Yeah, definitely. And I like that Logan went into the Baron before using his card, knowing he needs to get to the Hydrant so he could protect the original Snake Eyes. The original Sinful Spoil Snake Eyes from resolving. Let's see if he does use the Baron Negate here. He's prioritizing protecting the effect of Sinful Spoils rather than protecting the Turbulence. Which is interesting. Yeah. I guess when he doesn't have the Hydrant yet, it is probably one of the more important wet layers to go. Does he want to use his Negate here? He could just not have the Hydrant and try and win with his four Rescue Ace Spell and Trap cards and have the Baron Negate for the other cards in the hand. That's fine. Sure. Yep. Uh, Opting to keep the Baron here. He wants to take the challenge. I mean, he still has Alert and Rescue. Yep. But it's weird because Rescue's no not going to be Rescue's sure. not going to be able to summon back a, a Hydrant. Sure. Nope. There's there's no Preventer either. Just Airlifter and Turbulence. Looks like Steven is thinking during the draw phase. Maybe Logan has Logan. a copy of Impulse in his hand. Ooh, yep. that would be heads up. Okay, so he's going to be able to potentially summon back the airlifter, I'd imagine. 
Yeah, nope. I have no response. Turbulence would at least make it so if uh, anything happens to any of his other cards, he's able to destroy a card on the field. Yep. Yeah, offering some form of disruption yeah. instead of the follow-up. Not a bad option Three here phase. from Logan. We're into the main phase here of game one. Looks like he's going to attempt to normal summon airlifter. I will normal summon airlifter. Um, chain link one, airlifter, chain link two, fire He has engine. fire attacker here, so you yep. can't even use the, like, wow. can't even attempt to negate the okay. airlifter at this point. That's it's going to be able to summon to the field. I mean, you could use contain on it, actually, but it doesn't seem like it's worth it to do so. He's probably likely going to just attempt to negate the emergency when it comes to it. He might have his own Ash Blossom in hand or something as well. Taking a moment to consider his options, probably going to add emergency. It looks like it is going to be emergency yep. to yep. Steven's hand. If you don't already have emergency, you always have to add emergency here. And even, yeah. honestly, if you already do have emergency, maybe you add a second one. I imagine emergency is not used and it is activated like most other spells. Not, I think so. Not super sure, though. Now he's considering... Use, yep, here comes emergency. Yep. Oh, it's an Ash. It is the last card in hand is Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. That's huge. That is huge. The emergency is going to be negated here by the Ash Blossom that and Joyous Spring. Fine. Uh, activate Seeker. Yep, so there's he has one. Wanted. wanted is going to be able to add a Diabell, Mon Diabell Star monster from the deck to the hand. I believe there's only one at the moment. Here comes the Black Witch. Baron has not used this effect, correct? Has not. Yeah, this is really scary, though. I don't think you ever want to I actually invest the, the card into the uh, Diabell Star here, because unless you're, if you're choosing to activate the effect on the field, that will be met with the Baron almost for sure. Or even just any form of interruption. It's very expensive when you only have three cards in hand at this point. Please come to the main stage. Does have access to enemy controller. That actually might be huge here. So he's going to send uh, the airlifter to special summon the Diabell Star, the Black Witch, from the hand, and then the effect's going to activate on summon to set a seek sinful spoil from the deck to the field. Correct. If the Baron is used here instead of the contain, oh, okay, yeah, so opting to use the contain here, you can now chain the enemy controller, which is absolutely going to be negated by Baron. I mean, he's, yeah, I assume he's going to target that Baron to Fleur. I mean, likely you really want to target the Turbulence. So that you can resolve it yourself. Either way, yeah, either yeah. way it's negated, I guess. It doesn't really matter. I think you still target the Baron. I, I just can't imagine a world where this card resolves. <laughs> you're, you're, you're not letting this go. Uh, I will target the Turbulence. Nope, I'm wrong again, man. Maybe that's why I'm sitting here and there sitting in the finals. Either way, it's going to force out him to get I don't think he's going to give him the Turbulence. Yep. yep, that makes sense. Thinking. I certainly would not like my opponent having four cards. Um, that's fine, so it resolves. The uh, Dibble Star. So he's going to be able to set the original Sinful Spoil Snake Eyes from the deck to the field. That is at least a solid uh, transaction for him. He's going to be able to at least attempt to use Hydrant here. Correct. Any here? Yeah, both these decks are Sinful Spoils Rescue Ace, by the way. Even though they may look like they're playing different decks, they both have, are including these brand new cards from Age of, o Age of Overlord, the Sinful Spoils cards. The only difference is Steven plays only one Diabell Star, while Logan plays three. But they definitely both pack those three copies of Wanted. But yep, the original Sinful Spoils is going to summon Rescue Ace Hydrant to the field. So does Logan have any interruptions for this at this point? We know he has access to Alert as well as Extinguish. He might just have to Extinguish it now, but Steven's last card is Rescue. Yep. He's going to use the Extinguish here. Chain Alert. Oh, it's Alert. Okay. Honestly, uh, Alert? Gets Preventer or yeah. Turbulence. I mean, it has, it has to get Turbulence at this point, right? Yeah. Rescu uh, it would have been a lot better if it was Rescue, just bringing it back, adding uh, Turbulence from that point, and just being able to oh, yeah. conduct all your regular plays. would have been really strong. But this is still allowing you to get to a certain point. Logan didn't set himself up with that much follow-up. He does have, uh, I believe, Sinful Spoils in Grave, but he, d he didn't start with Wanted, did he? Was it just the Star? Logan, yeah, he didn't use Wanted. Steven used Wanted. So he doesn't even have that follow-up going for him. Steven is going to go for Preventer here to add to the hand. At the very least, Logan will be able to put back the debuff start uh, and then be able to add another Hydrant from his deck. Thank you. Uh, 
Um, yep, Wanted is an incredible card. Kind of reminds you of Sky Striker Engage, where you're going to be able to add a card and then draw a card later on. Yep, and it looks like Steven's foregoing the additional uh, effect of Sinful Spoils in the Grave. He's going to just put it back right now for the effect of Wanted so he can draw a card. Yeah, when you have the luxury of being able to wait to use that effect on the next turn, it's pretty nice, but needing that immediate card isn't bad. If you draw something useful, it's going to be really impactful, so he's going to be able to banish that Hydrant that was destroyed. Just going to go for Preventer, go to the battle phase. Going to crash it in and then be able to use Hydrant to search Turbulence. That's what it looks like he's going for. Logan's sitting on no Logan. cards in hand. Uh, the Baron. Yep, all he has is a set rescue, I believe. Uh, or a set alert, rather. So Preventer, if it's sent to the graveyard, is going to spell Hydra summon back a rescue. He's a monster from the Banished or the Graveyard. The Hydrant is coming back to the <laughs> field. So during May Phase 2, he's going to be able to add a rescue ace monster from the deck to the hand. And you were right, it's Rescue Ace Turbulence. Yeah, Steven navigating his uh, way through this turn as best as he can. He's doing a pretty good job. The airlifter and the... Uh, I'll manage the alert. Summon turn. Effect to set four. Yep. You can't do anything about it. This is pretty good. Now it's his turn to have the four Rescue Ace spell and trap cards taken from the deck and put onto the field. Extinguish, Contain, and Rescue. Oh, Emergency. And then rescue, probably. So we've already used Preventer, unfortunately. Do you think Steven tries to continue playing even further? Because he does get to use one of these right now. I, th I think you have to. He has to at least clear up this board a little bit. Yeah, he's already used his battle phase at this point. Yeah, he's going to need to maybe access something like SP Little Knight or find a way to get some more cards It looks off. like he's going to use Extinguish here. I drop the, uh, oh, oh, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, I can make Extinguish to pop the... He has to destroy the Turbulence, otherwise yep. uh, his, the opposing Turbulence would just get rid of another card for him. Yep, so it goes after the Turbulence first. Uh, effect of emergency to reset the Extinguish. Exactly. Yep, going to get to replenish it. So now if he wants, he can go into Link Rebo, into SB Little Knight, get rid of the Baron as well. Or, or, or just go straight into Typhon. Typhon, uh, he's going to be able to detach material to spin back the Baron to Fleur. Sure. Yep, this way he's able to keep the Hydrant on the field, keeping all the traps with their maximum effects. Yeah, it's really cool we get to see the power of this brand new card out of Asia Overlord. That's Super Star Slayer Typhon Sky Crisis. It's a good last ditch effort uh, to come out of your extra deck. It has 3,000 attack, or just 2,900 29. Attack. Uh, yeah. It does not negate yeah. itself. <laughs> and then and any monster with 3,000 more attack won't be able to activate their effects. And it can return a card on the field, but he won't be able to summon the rest of the turn. Nope. Yep. Oh. Wasn't out allowed to summon it? Nope. Is that different from the one you just yeah. uh, set one. What are the requirements for Typhoon uh, exactly? Your opponent has to. Oh, have they have to special summon the extra deck twice yeah. in the previous turn. Oh, and, and it was just the Baron. Usually it's way more than that, but I yeah, didn't even link it away or anything. It was just the Baron. Uh, yep. Alert. Sure. It's going to alert back the airlifter, I imagine. Do you think. I think I'm, he could have still, I guess, couldn't he still gone into SP Little Knight, maybe? Eh, I don't know. It's tough. He, he sure. could have, but I don't think he wants to get rid of the Hydrant at this point. To be fair. Uh, With the rescue? Oh, because the rescue's already in the grave. Oh, he, didn't get to put he it got back. alert. Okay. He, he banished the rescue. That's right. He yeah. opened up it in his hand. Now he's alert set. Tough, tough spot here for Steven. Yeah, really had to prioritize keeping the Hydrant on the field because there wasn't really any access to Hydrant beyond this point. He would have to get use the emergency. It's a little expensive at this point. Didn't want to have to use all of his cards right in the beginning of the turn just to like prevent sure. Logan from getting started. He's going to banish the emergency from his graveyard to reset one of these trap cards. Right, because uh, it looks like he's going to set Extinguish. Sure. I think so. Thinking on resolution. Okay. Yeah, because the next uh, step is going to be that Sinful Spoils adding the Hydrant to your hand. <laughs> Got to find the right one. So he's going to use Extinguish on the Baron. Before Baron can go after any one of the other sets. Logan looking at his options, considering for a moment, uh, and it's resolution. gone. So now Steven's going to... I'll rescue target the Baron. Oh, because oh. he controls Hydrant, he could special summon the Baron back. Insane! That's my Baron now. Oh, the play is getting a, a response from the crowd. They're happy to see that. Let's see if this is, this, that's huge. Steven's showing he really knows the mirror match. You're good to continue. Yeah, Steven really navigated this turn like as well as he could have. He got himself out of a sticky situation and now is pretty much in the advantage. Thinking to add, uh, Shadow Dev also back add Hydrant. Well, add a little bit. Yeah, sure. Uh, that's fine. All right, so he allows it. He's going to let the Hydrant access go. 
And then I believe Debuster goes to the bottom of the deck. Yep. Shuffled and cut. Fuck those. Okay. Hydrant hand. goes to the hand here. Steven still has the Baron. Three cards face down, facing down. Logan has Extinguished set. He added back the Airlifter, so Airlifter was ideally going to add HQ so he can get his additional normal summon for the Hydrant. Otherwise, he's stuck with both of these without being able to really use them. But the Baron just ends it, right? I mean, I think a contain <laughs> on the airlifter would do enough, but it looks like he's going to have to normal summon the hydrant here. Before he puts down another monster and makes it untargetable, he's going to uh, want sorry, to use something. Can you send back that. Um, you are good to continue. So now it is an extinguished set, right? So off of the previous emergency, so that is still so. live uh, for Logan here because of the hydrant on the field. You can use the effect to try and add a rescue ace monster from the deck to the hand. Train impermanence. Oh, mm. just a regular infinite impermanence here. That's huge. That was the card drawn off of the wanted as well. Wanted so good. Age of Overlord really made an impact this weekend, and it's just been one of the most the greatest booster sets in quite some time. And we've seen it all over the place, and it's in both of these players' decks in the finals. and really can't do much of anything. Uh, you couldn't even attempt to activate. Like, if you're going to use the extinguisher, there, you had to go after the uh, Turbulence there. Otherwise, Turbulence would just get rid of the Hydrant as well. Indeed. And we have just Link Kribo pass. I think Steven is going to be able to take this game number one. Sure, yep, he still has the Baron live. Uh, Baron can just go ahead and destroy the Link Kribo and just start attacking. But maybe he doesn't even want to do that. He doesn't want to play into an impulse that he likely knows is not there. But Contain on Link Kribo? All right, so contain uh, negates its effects. Can't be used for any material here. Uh, Hydrant effect search. Hydrant likely going to just add a copy of Airlifter. Uh, Airlifter's effect in hand as well uh, is going to be able to trigger. Similar to Impulse, instead of summoning from your deck, it summons another one from your hand. Yep, and that's going to prompt a Baron negate here from Steven. Yep, not allowing that extinguish to ever become live. This airlifter, once it's normal, someone is going to grab a copy of HQ, and the Turbulence is going to attempt to set four more cards. And I'll keep saying it. If Turbulence sets eight, it's over. <laughs> I, I, didn't know that, I didn't know this was something you've said before. <laughs> I'm going to keep saying it. <laughs> it, is, it. It does make sense if you get to set eight cards out of your deck that you're probably going to be so far ahead. It's hard. If you've activated two effects that have made you go plus eight, I think it's done. <laughs> it does not look good here for Steven. But he's gonna, uh, it looks like he's the airlifter to add rescue eight, ace, HQ. That's going to let him shuffle back four Rescue Ace cards sure. uh, to two, draw a card and back. lets him have an additional normal summon One, for a Rescue two, Ace. Three. And then likely the fourth being the Rescue that's banished. Yep, there it is. I'm a little surprised Logan hasn't conceded yet, but you know it is the finals. Maybe he wants to see like what Steven's strategy is, how he's going to navigate uh, the rest of this turn. Two. Maybe oh. he's thinking out a strategy for side at this point. He's just taking the time to more consider time to how cards. he's inside. You so know. you see more cards, too. He's going to set alert, rescue, contain, and extinguish. So he set eight. He has set eight. Feels great. Now he just has to do some damage. This Link Kribo is just, like, terrified right now. <laughs> he's like, I don't know what to do. I can't protect you anymore, Logan. I'm sorry. Use rescue to just uh, immediately uh, summon back that preventer. Let's get that damage in. That is game. <laughs> no. <laughs> but yeah, that was a quick, well piloted game one from Steven after losing the die roll, having to navigate through those four sets from the turbulence. Yeah. Cards like Enemy Controller and drawing that rescue really helped him play into it. I mean, yeah, it really came down to that Baron Negate instead of using the Baron Negate instead of the campaign when he was able to chain that Enemy Controller. But game one, when you're playing a Rescue Ace Mirror Match, you're not really going to think about cards like Enemy Controller. But those tech picks are what make the difference at the Yu-Gi-Oh! Championship Series, including cards like Enemy Controller, things that you're not going to expect, things that will give you the edge in the Mirror Match where notoriously known whoever goes first is the winner. That's all I kept hearing this weekend is, oh yeah, the Rescue Ace Mirror is about who goes first, but you can hedge your bets, build your deck well, and you can actually have the good results where now Steven is just one game away, a win, one game win away 
from becoming a two-time YCS champion. Yeah, this is one of those things where the deck actually does have a lot of interaction. Usually when you talk about mirror matches, the more interaction that they have, the better of a mirror match it can be. And in this in instance, because Impulse exists, because uh, Ash Blossom and like Impermanence and Emergency, there's so many layers to how the effects go through. Generally speaking, there's not that much actual negation, uh, like a hard negation. We see them from Logan's side for accessing from the extract, but even then, it's not going to be something you can get to every single time. Usually, it requires you to have access to Diabell Star and access to Hydrant separately, or just drawing the Jet Synchron like previously. It's not like something you can guarantee. So you're really relying on as much interaction as possible, and Enemy Controller is the king of interaction. Definitely. I mean, Logan's start was not bad. It was incredible, actually. I mean, he, was, he opened up with the Jet Synchro, so he didn't get the two Synchros, but Baron, Ash Blossom, four Rescue Spell and Traps, but the biggest thing, he didn't have that Hydrant. Mm -hmm. That was key there in helping Steven come back into the game. Yeah, he really never gave himself access to it, and I think that would have made a world of a difference here. Yeah, we, we talked about making that Baron before he used the original Spoil, the original Sinful Spoil, Snake Eyes, but then he didn't negate the Ash Blossom, so he never had the Ash, and uh, it really came back to bite him. A little, apparently just a little too confident in this field, yeah. not expecting the enemy controller to help uh, crack through. Mm. It was definitely an iconic one. Yeah, he's thinking about if it right now. He's gonna. I don't think he's just going to be thinking about it right now. He'll probably be thinking about it tonight if he ends up losing <laughs> this game number two. Here in the finals, we could be one game away from crowning our YCS champion. Let's see. What is going to happen? Steven is going to be going second again. Will Logan open up as well as he did in game number one? It looks pretty similar. Like it looks good enough. There's a copy of Ash Blossom and Nibiru, but it looks like also a copy of Dia Bellstar and Airlifter. So he doesn't need that Rota. Yeah, not going to play into Drone Lockbird here, even though there should definitely not be a Drone Lockbird in your deck anymore in this <laughs> matchup. The Dia Bellstar, the Black Witch, is going to send that reinforcement army to the graveyard to set will summon itself and then set the original Sinful Spoil Snake Eyes. Sinful Spoil Snake Eyes is going to be activated, sending that Diabell Star, the Black Witch, to the graveyard to summon out the Hydrant. Interesting line here. Uh, when you have yeah. access to Airlifter in your hand, you're going to choose to go for the Hydrant this way? He might be hyper-focused on not having the Hydrant last game, so he's immediately going to make sure he has it online right away. But yeah, I do see what you're saying, going the Airlifter for Emergency and then using the other package to go for a Jet Synchron or something. If he, but I don't think he's... Yeah, Steven's the one using Jet Synchron. No, no, it's Logan. We saw him draw it last game. Interesting. There's the Airlifter. But now he gets to prevent uh, targeting for that Airlifter, so maybe that's the idea he had here. I mean, if you opted to make Savage first, uh, it would be the same thing. True, true. A little bit more expensive, though. You do have to give up a card in hand. And I think, I, I, okay, that makes more sense. Because the other two cards in Logan's hand are so powerful, being Ash Blossom and Nibiru, he just wants to keep everything and try to go for a more simple line. That might be the case. And the Airlifter did add Emergency, so he's going to use this Emergency. Do you think he's just going to go into and Turbulence? I, yeah, I think this is just going to grab a Turbulence here. Or, or a Preventer. Interesting. Maybe he already has access to Turbulence. Oh, no. Oh, he hasn't used the, the Hydrant yeah, yeah, yet. Yeah, the Hydrant is what added the Turbulence, right? We know it's in hand at this point, probably. I don't know if he used it yet, but I'm assuming he has access to the Turbulence. Yeah, it looks like he did add the Turbulence off the Hydrant. Much better start here for Logan. I mean, he had a solid start in the last game, but now he at least has the Hydrant on the field, so it's going to be a little harder for Steven to come back. But the thing Steven has on his side now, he was able to dive into his side deck, knowing that he's probably going to be going second in game number two. So there will be key cards that he might be able to access. Stuff like Harpy's Feather Duster is pretty useful in, in many ways just to kind of simplify the board and fight back from all those uh, Rescue Ace spell traps that get set from the, tur the Turbulence. Oh, he does play Reinforce. So this will allow him to play around uh, a lot of the board wipes, like Lightning Storm, or not necessarily Lightning Storm, but uh, Raigeki, as well as uh, Evenly Match is the big one. Mm, and then the Graveyard Effect for the follow-up to be able to reset a trap is really useful. Well, you'll do it First on. Spell. You'll do it on. Uh, he was reading my card. Yeah, I was. He was waiting for me to. to look. Okay. I guess we're being uh, really strict here in the finals here. <laughs> Giving a slow play warning to the player who wasn't even. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But anyways, turbulence is going to set four cards face down. You already have Preventer on the field. Are you going to use your alert? I mean, like, why not most of the time? But uh, here, we're just going to go ahead and link away. SP Little Knight. 
Looks like that's what he's eyeing. Like IP, right? Like, yeah. IP. You want to get a maximum value at this point, and you have the rescue to be able to summon back the Hydrant if you need to. Well, I mean, you probably will. So dropping. Well, oh, that is an impulse. That's dropping. a good draw. Stand by. Main. Thank you. This is what it all comes down to. IP plus Provender is pretty nice. He's probably going to summon back this Hydrant. Yep, he's going to rescue it from the graveyard and bring it back onto the field. I'm going to make both those trap cards have their beneficial effects now. I will uh, normal summon the Hydrant. Sure. All right, Steven's first action is to summon Hydrant. What will this prompt from Logan? He has a few things he can do. He has Preventer, he has IP Mascarena, he has Contain, Extinguish, and Reinforce. I imagine you don't want to have to use hydrant. all your responses on just Hydrant at this point. Like, maybe you want to just save your Contain for the Emergence, or not the Emergence, yeah, the Turbulence, but then again, you can lose out to Emergency if they have it. And there it is. Yeah. And he has the Ash Blossom to meet the Emergency, so it is going to be Contained. Anything else here? All right, so Hydrant is used, okay. Emergency is used. This leaves you with essentially Diabell Star or uh, Hard so Drawing. Sure. Going to send the Hydrant to the Graveyard to Spell Summon Diabell Star, the Black Witch. That's going to have the effect to set a Snake Eye or a Sinful Spoil spell. Oh, it, w it would be a lot different if it could set any Snake Eye. No, no, yes, yeah, definitely only the Sinful Spoils, but the original Sinful Spoils Snake, snake eye, eye happens to be both. Looks like he's going to just try to banish the Sinful Spoils right now. I have no response. No response here. Linking away the Preventer and the IP Mascarena. Imagine he's going to go into SP Little Knight. He's going to get the SP Little Knight and Preventer's uh, and effect. The preventer, or the preventer is running I have no response. So uh, I'm sorry, this is trying the... That'll get banished. So the SP Little Knight's going to banish the original uh, Sinful Spoils Snake Eyes from the field. Thinking. Airlifter will be able to activate its effect. I imagine this will trigger the effect of the impulse in Steven's hand. Um... I will... I'll chain impulse. Does chain the impulse. Since he activated monster effect, he's going to be able to attribute the impulse from the hand to spell summon a rescue ace machine from the deck? Yeah, it has to be specifically a machine, so you're not able to get into airlifter, but you are able to get into fire attacker, turbulence, and hydrant, which, honestly, do you need anything else? Nah, we could always use more. <laughs> the turbulence is pretty good, though. Yes. I mean, fire attacker, at the very least... Uh, or Fire Engine, rather. Fire Attacker also, but Fire Engine will get you into everything else in your deck that you really need. It does look like he is going to summon out the Turbulence. Now the Airlifter was special summoned back by the Preventer, so the Airlifter is going to be able to add a Rescue Ace spell, and he's going to go sure. for that Rescue Ace HQ. Thinking on Earth. Sure. Emergency is already used, so it's a question of how you want to deal with this Turbulence. You've already used Contain, so you probably just have to extinguish it. How many hands? I have two in hand. I think so. This game might be under Logan's control. He might be going to a game three here in the finals. He's going to extinguish the turbulence. Looks like Steven's considering conceding, I think. I have no response. Nope. That's going to destroy the turbulence. He has to really weigh his options here. He does have another one, and that's not going to do I much good. Yeah, but that is enough. Yep. You, I can tell by the way he's grabbing his yeah. graveyard. He's considering just picking it up. I've done that many times in my career. And we are going to a game three here in the finals of YCS Indy. This is going to be the last game of an epic, amazing weekend. We've seen so many different decks from Exodia to Tier Laments to Monadium to Fluundries. We didn't get to see Fluundries, but it's been flying around. We didn't you know, put you through that torture, but there's definitely been Fluundries around. Infernoble, Ken and Gen decks were making their appearance. Basically, Age of Overlord just really taking over the meta. The, a new age truly has dawned here in the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game thanks to Age of Overlord, and I gotta say, I like the way it looks. Absolutely. When we look at this match here, we got to really take into the, uh, account the importance of Hydrant. We saw the difference, obviously, from Game 1 not having Hydrant was uh, really hard because it just made it so you don't get any of the extra effects from your traps, and you weren't able to really use Alert for any value. Alert without Hydrant doesn't really do much of anything. It's essentially your worst rescue where you're able to just add back a card from the graveyard. Uh, when you only have a limited access, not really what you're looking for. 
but Extinguish here in game two, we got to see it go after the Turbulence, and because Hydrant was on the field, it also locks out the Turbulence's effects for the rest of the turn, and there was another copy of Turbulence in Steven's hand, which would have been good enough to play had there uh, not been a Hydrant on Logan's field on activation. Yeah, we definitely talk about that in the Rescue Ace Pearly matchup, how Extinguish can just you go after the Pearly, and even though it's a, not a once per turn kind of card, it's going to shut down the rest of them for the rest of the turn. It's an excellent card to use while you have that Hydrant face up on the field. Extinguish is one to look out for, especially when you're trying to summon multiple monsters that can use their effects like that, like Turbulence or Pearly Elite. So now that like Logan's essentially seen how to target down the mirror match from Steven game one, I imagine he's done it plenty of times himself in previous rounds. How do you think he's going to tackle going into this game three where he has to go second? I mean, it's tough. I mean, I've heard from Rescue players all weekend. I mean, we can see his deck is not as prepared for going second yeah, as Stevens, but he's going to have cards that can still be useful, useful tools. I mean, Harvey's Feather Duster is a card that you always see going in uh, against this deck. You're also going to have to be able to play through. I mean, you talk about opening up with Impulse to try and get someone on the field. That's going to be key. Stuff like Triple Tactics Talent. We haven't seen a lot of Triple Tactics Thrust this weekend, but any kind of card like that that can keep you playing or get a blowout kind of card in the matchup could potentially help. It's going to be tough, though, going second. I know. If I was in the finals playing the game three and I'm going first, I'm feeling pretty good. And I think Steven is in that situation, especially when you were so well practiced and you've been doing so well lately. This is his game to win, but Logan is going to try his best to stop him. I think one of the biggest keys for Logan here is something we haven't exactly talked about in his list, and that is super polymerization. Yeah, does that make a huge impact here in the mirror match when you're going second? Well, you're able to cut off a Hydrant on your opponent's side of the field pretty quickly, especially if they leave up a Hydrant and Preventer. You're just able to uh, send them both away, or just Hydrant at anything, right? Usually Hydrant Turbulence, uh, and then you're just able to make a Mud Dragon of your own, which locks away their opponent's back row because they don't even have a Rescue Ace monster on the field, but also you just prevent yourself from being targeted, which is huge in the mirror match. Yeah, Mud Dragon of the Swamp, we've seen so many other decks being able to go into Mud Dragon of the Swamp, mainly like tier limits or stuff, but once you get that out against Rescue Ace, all their cards target, so being able to prevent your cards from being targeted, can be huge. We're going to have to see if that Super Polymerization is going to come into play here in Game 3. We're mere moments away from starting our final duel of YCS Indy, and this is it. Thanks for being around all weekend. It's all come down to this. We will have a YCS champion after this game. It's Game 3 of the Finals. It's time to duel one last time here in Indianapolis, Indiana. Well, this is really interesting. Steven, opening airlifter, I do believe I saw a wand in his hand. He just knows. Yeah, there is clearly a wanted in his hand, as well as oh uh, his hand's great. His hand's amazing. <laughs> his hand was so good. Let's see if he could be close to winning here. He's going to add emergency after airlifter. He just wanted to uh, see what, well, when you don't activate one. wanted in the draw phase, because you just know that Drill and Lockbird is not in either deck at this point. It's just not something you would ever want to keep in in this matchup. You think he was just really hoping that Airlifter baited some kind of interruption I'm so that Wanted could uh, resolve after the fact? Because you assume if it's not accurate in the draw phase, you don't have it. I'm thinking so, because, yeah, the Diabell Star Engine is a much better way to access the Hydrant, as you're going to be able to get that draw from the original like Simple Spoil Snake Guy. But he's going to add the Diabell Star to the Black Witch, send the infinite and permanence from his hand to the graveyard to special summon the Black Witch. Yeah. That's scary when you see something like that sent to the graveyard. Yeah, every card in your hand must be really strong. I mean, you have to consider... When you're setting four cards, you can only keep, you only have one extra spot. So I wonder <laughs> there's some other uh, card going to that other set spot that couldn't uh, be prioritized over the impermanence. Yeah, but here comes the original Sinful Spoil Snake Guy. It's going to send the Diabell Star uh, to the Graveyard uh, to Special and Rescue Ace Hydrant. And now he's going to use Wanted to return the Sinful Spoil spell and draw a card. Interesting. He's opting to just get the draw immediately. Not for turn. Oof. Uh, switch. And he drew one of the Rescue Ace spell cards that he might have been able to set from his deck, but he chose to do this because I'm guessing he knew. I mean, I trust Steven. He knows what he's doing. I wouldn't question him this deep into the tournament, but the Hydrant is going to add I Turbulence. Feel, I feel like maybe he was looking for some kind of extender. Yeah, it has to be. He still has the Emergency in hand. Looks like he's going into Link Rebo here. Um, they're going to go into SP Little Knight. Oh, okay. So he's going to those away into SP Little Knight. Looks like he's trying Not to play yet. around infinite impermanence. Not yet. So by having SP Little Knight, when you uh, summon the Turbulence, if they activate something like infinite impermanence, you're going to be able to chain the SP Little Knight, banishing the Turbulence and the SP Little Knight off the field until the end of the turn, and it will no longer be on the field, so it won't be negated by the impermanence, and you still get to set those four Rescue Ace Spell or Trap cards. Also plays around Nibiru a little bit, because you're able to just keep the monsters. But the big thing is he didn't really need to play around infinite impermanence. He had a copy of Emergency in his hand, still. Very true. So he's going to set rescue, emergency, but contain, alert. and extinguish. Everything rescue. Everything but alert. Okay, good. It's not just me. <laughs> Logan, sitting right there, also had to yeah, double check which spell card that was. Uh, 
Seems like a solid opening board so far from Steven. Looks like he's considering using the emergency here to trade out the turbulence for a hydrant. Do I use it yet? use it yet. He has not used it yet. What? I think uh, Steven's getting a little yes. nervous here yes, we're good. because, again, one game away, yeah, yeah, we're the good. nerves finally come get you. That's crazy. so crazy. I'm taking out myself. Uh, I will activate uh, emergency then. So emergency is going to special summon a rescue ace monster from the deck, and then he's going to have to send one to the graveyard. Yeah, we're just going to put a hydrant back on the field, give up the either the preventer in his hand. I will send the... Or just the turbulence on the field. I think the turbulence on the field. Turbulence. And now you're able to use one of those sets if you would like. So now he's going to be able to special summon Rescue Ace Preventer by banishing a Rescue Ace card from the hand. What a hand here from Steven. He's going to link away the SP Little Knight and the Preventer. We're going to start going into maybe Reperdokas. Yep, the Reperdokas Preventer is going to be able to reborn. Uh, maybe just the Hydrant again? Or no, nope, just another Turbulence. So he's going to change. Hydrant's going to become a Cybers, and he's going to start going into the Cybers line. Oh, wow. Here he goes. He's going to link summon four. Link decoder? Is that what it's called? I always forget what it's called. Yes, link decoder. Link decoder. In here. These Reap. two are going to be able to make Protect Code Talker. Oh, actually, you know, he's going to keep link decoder on the field. And there's Protect Code Talker. Now he's going to link uh, those away for Firewall link Dragon. Link Decoder is going to be able to special summon itself back to the zone. Is it banished for a cost? Or, oh, it just summons itself back. Yeah, this yep. is the one that banishes it. It is not cost. It is also a quick effect to summon itself back. Yep, the Protect Code Talker can come back to the field. Uh, the okay. And it's Banish. going to do so right here by banishing ratings up to a Link 3. And now he's able to add a card back to his hand if he likes. So activate uh, Firewall Dragon. To add back the At least we're getting to see something we haven't seen from a lot of Rescue Ace players coming up this oh, weekend. He's going to add back Preventer. This is an excellent start here for Steven. Now he's going to link them all away. For Terahertz. Another copy of a new Firewall Dragon, Terahertz. Did you ever imagine Firewall could still potentially be winning YCSs oh, this yeah. deep down? Oh, yeah. Firewall Dragon, one uh, of the best cards of all time. Firewall Dragon, Dark Fluid, Neo Tempest, Terahertz. <laughs> yeah, we call it terahertz <laughs> around these parts. But uh, the terahertz is going to let him send a cyber monster from his extra deck to the graveyard to gain 2,000 attack permanently. He's going to send the cyber's Druus Worm, or D-Save Worm. And while that's in the graveyard, it's kind of like, a, while he has the firewall, it's a spell and trap negate. I'm very strong at like dealing with a potential in, uh, evenly matched, lightning storm, Harvey's Feather Duster. Really want to just protect those sets that you've worked so hard for to get from turbulence. Thinking here still, then. So he activated emergency, I think, during the next turn, and that's going to be met by Ash Blossom from Logan. I will attempt to. So now he's going to want to rescue back that hydrant. Rescue back the turbulence. Oh, the turbulence, even. Okay. True. Interesting. You're good to continue. We talk so much about how important hydrant is. I don't think these players care that much about it. And that's why they're there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how Logan's going to navigate this. This is going to be tough. Gonna start with Wanted. I'm gonna get access to the Diabell Star here. The Diabell Star, the Black Witch, can send a card from the hand or field of the graveyard to special summon itself. You're good. Yep. Let's take a look at his hand here. We have Pot of Prosperity. I can't really tell what the rest of it is. Of course. Double check what that card does. The attack gain is permanent. He can do it during both players' turns. If he has something else, another cyber monster he wants to send to gain 2,000 more attack. He definitely does. There is one other target, I believe, in his uh, extra deck. Uh, actually, maybe not. We'll have to see. Oh, he has Prankatops. The Dino Wrestler is going to come out and immediately be treated off to take out the Firewall, so he no longer controls that. All right, get, uh, that's that's really gets rid of one other interruption. That is huge. Still has to fight through both trap cards here. And I believe the other set is another emergency. Oh, no. Uh, no, he used uh, both emergencies here. So yep. it is alert? I think so. He, has, he used the emergency A set. It's alert and then contain and extinguish. But no hydrant on the field. Logan actually having a big opportunity here. He could turn things around right here in game number three with his Pot of Prosperity. 
What is he looking for? Do you think it's Harvey's Feather Duster? That seems like a good one. I don't. I couldn't really tell what the rest of the cards he has in his hand, so I don't know what he's missing. But Harvey's Feather Duster would be a good start. He needs something to deal with this contain and extinguish. You're good. Let's see if he finds it. Preventer, Hydrant, an Airlifter, Super Polymerization, Airlifter, and yep. another Preventer. Okay. Five monsters and a decent spell. I think you take the Super Poly if you happen to have a copy of Airlifter or Preventer already. Yeah, that, I mean, it gets you past the contain, and that's really all it takes. Things are looking not great here for Steven. Maybe Logan can bounce back and become his, this will be his first YCS win. He said this was his first finals. The only thing is, I think the only way he can start is that Diabell star. So he doesn't have access to a fire monster. The super polymerization doesn't get uh, any value here. So he's going to have to take the airlifter. That was the airlifter, right? It wasn't preventer. I imagine it was. I think so. I think there still is a copy of Ash Blossom in Steven's hand as well. Is there? Because we know he started with Infinite Impermanence as well as Ash Blossom, right? Ah, uh, yes. Oh, yeah, in the big rock. Mm -hmm. Oh, he had both? He had all three? I'm oh, pretty my sure, God. I'm pretty sure he has. I don't want to say it too loud That's just in case they can hear us, but I'm pretty sure he has one of those pretty good defensive options in his hand. I don't know if he'll be able to utilize yep. it this turn, but it might be a way for him to get back into this game. All right, so Airlif uh, Airlifter going to grab that emergency. Still have access to Diabell Star. Steven closing, uh, holding the rest of his interruptions a little close to his chest. Nope, the was discarded earlier. Nope, oh, there is going to be the emergency. Is there an Ash Blossom in hand? Oh, no, it's going to resolve. I think it was just a Nibiru then. I, I know I saw two of those types of interruptions. Mm hmm for sure. And now he's going to send the airlift to the graveyard. So now before he has a chance to activate Hydrant, Steven might have a response. Is he going to contain it? Might just extinguish it. Looks like he's thinking about Extinguish. I'll come to Extinguish Pop. Yep, you're going to just destroy it. Just destroy it, because he does not have a Hydrant on the field. But this forces Logan to commit more bodies on the field. Emergencies used, his normal summons used. Likely has to use the Diabell Star, and the Contain will cover that. Oh, it looks like, is Turbulence the other card in his hand? Contain. How many summons is he at? At least two. Uh, it was set off. Turbulence. It was Airlifter oh, no, it and Hydrant, hydrant. That's it. yeah. Yes. Logan trying to remember what happened on the previous turn so he knows what his cards are. Trying to get as much information yeah. back as you can. You definitely don't want to uh, misremember which sets are still remaining. So he's going to send that triple tactics talent to the Great Witch's Special Summon, Diabell Star, the Black Witch. And yep, not having used any monster effects yet this turn because you sat to hold off. That's fine. It's going to allow that effect. Even if you get Sinful Spells, you can just go ahead and negate the monster summoned off of it. You're good. Yeah, but he does have Wanted in the graveyard, so that it will net him a free draw here. He activated Pot of Prosperity, right? So oh, not you're this right. Turn, yeah. pot, pot of Prosperity, cutting him off. And he's going to do half damage. Anything here? Yep, have not activated the effect of Hydrant yet, so maybe you just have to f yep. use the Contain. Either that, or you just wait until Turbulence hits the field and just negate that. This is quite an intense match. I'm literally on the edge of my seat. It's been so back and forth. Sure. So yeah. Hydrant's going to be able to add now. I'm not normal, right? He normal. normal summon the airlifter. Yes. So he's going to have to grab the Hydrant here, or maybe even just starts going for Preventer and starting to like do some link climbing. But I think in the end, you need to resolve Turbulence. Oh, no, okay. So we're going to go for Preventer here. Good. Preventer to the hand that's going to allow so many. Preventer, not, on, not only a body you can just put on the field from your hand, it has that follow-up effort it's sent to the graveyard to spell someone back or rescue ace as well. Very strong card. Going to banish the Hydrant from the graveyard to summon rescue ace Preventer. There is another monster there. Yeah, he's just going to use it to uh, stop the turbulence now, forcing the last interruption. And I think there is a, a turbulence in his hand. So this resolves the both trap cards, or the trap cards are turned off. Just the alert difference. doesn't really do anything. It just only adds back from graveyard here. But this is, he's now at four summons, so this will be summon number five. Yeah, he's going to go into Link Grubo and likely going into SP. It looks like that is what he's thinking about. 
SP S and preventer effect. SP will help against Nibiru. Sure. Picking on target. Sure. SP's gonna banish a card on the field. What is he gonna go after? Steven looking a little perplexed. They're deep in this game three. Really could be anyone's game. What an epic way to finish out the tournament. I mean, as long as, uh, if Logan's last card in hand is not Turbulence, he has to banish the Turbulence, right? Yeah, he's going to go ahead and banish the Turbulence here. And then Hydrant, um, that's fine. You're going to continue. Was it summon five before the uh, SP? Or like the Link Kribo, I think, was the fifth one. Okay, I think he might have had to chain Nibiru to the SP's effect before he was able to put another monster on the field. No, he had the Turbulence. He had the Turbulence. Yep, so he's going to Nibiru, so he's not going to be able to resolve the Turbulence. This is huge here. And not only does it, it's the third monster on the field, so the Nibiru is still going to be able to come out and do the token. So the SP Little Knight's going to be changed in Nibiru. He's going to be able to banish two monsters on his side of the field to come back during the end phase. But the big thing is Turbulence will not be setting four cards. How much follow-up has Steven guaranteed himself? Like he has the alert. There should be at least a Hydrant in the graveyard, right? Zero, zero token. Zero, zero token. 3,000 attack Nibiru. Tokens going in the middle zone. Yeah, put that thing in attack mode. It's got zero attack. And that's uh, it. Nibiru the rival ending the turn. SP Little Knight's going to bring back Turbulence and SP Little Knight unless Steven has some activations here at the end phase. No, you're good. Nothing. Here comes back. SP Little Knight and Turbulence the field. So all Logan has for any sort of disruption is this SP Little Knight. It's a little threatening, though, because it's not like you can just enter battle phase attack over the Little Knight because that'll trigger the Turbulence as well. So you have to be pretty careful as to how you play into this. I mean, he has the tra he just has to get a rescue ace on the field, and I think he's going to be... Uh, I'll enter battle phase. Nope, he's just going to go to battle phase. We're going to see if that exactly what you just said happened is going to happen. going to attack over the Little Knight here. Do another 14. Let's see if he decides to use Turbulence. First damage, right? Correct. 66. Yep, double check and make sure. It's an effect that doesn't come up too often, but nope. Oh, does Turbulence require uh, you to have something else on the field? You might have to have another rescue ace. Now he's going to banish the Preventer. Hydrant to Special Summon Preventer. At this point, you're pretty much free to go. Yeah, he's in really good shape. He's going to be able to link away Nibiru and the Preventer and Tahita. Uh, yes. So uh, Preventer's going to be able to special summon back the Hydrant. Or the Turbulence, right? Like it's or the Turbulence, yeah. And then you can just summon back his Hydrant. Well, you, you, you have access to everything at this point. Yeah, Hydrant's going to get you Turbulence, so you might as well have the Hydrant on the field as well. Hita's also going to be able to get you Airlifter from your opponent's graveyard. Or a Preventer. We probably don't want Preventer. Yeah, he's going to just take his Hydrant. <laughs> Why not? So Heat the Special Summons a Fire Monster from the opponent's uh, graveyard to a zone that it points to. Interesting, going for both Hydrants here. It grabs an Airlifter. Has not Normal Summon yet, right? Nope, just entered battle phase with that Nibiru in attacked. A special Summon for Venner, and then gone that way. Using Emergency to reset here. Going to just reset Extinguish, immediately use it, probably destroy. The yep, destroy the Turbulence. Steven is moments away from winning his second YCS. Airlifter coming down. It's going to add emergency from the deck to the hand, I imagine. Nope, Rescue Ace HQ. Yeah, he, like it's true. He does need to start putting back these extra resources. Very true. And I also think, at this point, like the Nibiru token is not going to be doing anything, but perhaps you have to go make SP Little Knight to banish the Sinful Spoils uh, from the, snake, graveyard. the Snake Eye, specifically. That, that would be head up. SP yes. Little Knight That's not like only can banish cards react. on the field, it can also banish cards fair. from the graveyard. Something to keep in mind. It is brand new. Out of Age Overlord. Going back in. There's the alert for the impulse here. Yes. Just the hydrant. Just layering up all his defenses. Logan sitting on no cards. Things are looking good here for Steven Santoli and all of Canada. Therefore the will. Here we go. He's going to put back and I will do as one, two, three spell, two spells, a trap, and yeah, just one of the preventers. Keep some in the deck. Going. 
Let's see, oh my another gosh. Ash Blossom. I, oh I believe the other goodness. card in hand is a Turbulence, actually. Wow. He's just sealing the deals. When it's your day, it's your day. Steven might become a two-time uh, YCS champion. Top eight worlds this summon. year. He won the World's Points playoff at the NAWCQ. He's been on fire. He's been phenomenal. No one has been able to stop him. He's played with He's so many different so decks. He's getting so nervous he doesn't even have two Rescuers cards in his graveyard currently. Yep. For so moments, I'm typing him because I really thought we were about to end the game. I was building him up, but he has done so phenomenal this year. I mean, making the top eight at the World Championship That's is so good. hard, especially when they had to play yeah. seven rounds this year. And he brought Mathmec, which was interesting because oh everyone thought he was, oh, he's the Exosister guy. He's the one using Exosisters. But now he is so moments away from winning his second YCS. And, like, yeah, he's not locked down to one deck. He can play a lot of variety decks. And he's been using this Rescue Ace deck a little differently than most of the ones that we've seen on stream this weekend. I mean, we the Firewall uh, package, there's a lot of different ways to get to the Firewall one. I mean, Leak Decoder is a really easy way to get to it. But as we've seen that kind of version fall out of favor recently. But in the Mirror Match, does it, you think it kind of helps when there's cards? Well, you talked about Super Polarization. It doesn't really help against that. But it's kind of like it didn't really do well. He lost the game he did that. It, Oh, no, still this it, game. It's still, still, it's still happening. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's in control, yeah. so it just didn't look good for him for yeah. a second. I think it's it's weird because it requires so many uh, extra X slots. And, I mean, it's I think the best part about it is how little it requires. But I I personally like Logan's package a little bit more because I'm, I think I'm more invested in the Jet Synchron engine, but it does require more main deck breaks, and I think that's what uh, Steven's on. He just wanted to really accommodate his main deck to having as much interruption and as much ability to go second as possible because we talked about how rescues can be really volatile in the mirror. Uh, if your opponent goes first and just able to set up, you can't really get through every single card there because it's a lot for free. But when you build your deck to play into those interactions, you know what you have to face against. It's not it's four cards, but it's four cards that you absolutely know what they are. You don't know exactly where they are, but you know when they're going to be used. You know how to control that interaction. So that's really what he's playing for. He's been playing for that. Even prior, before Rescue Ace really got its popularity, he's been playing with the enemy controllers, he's been playing this strategy of putting the monsters on the field, just generating advantage and uh, playing from his toolbox of an extra deck, and then keeping the main deck tight with just points of interaction and being able to control the game as much as you can. Yeah, I think it's been working out really well for him. And I mean, we talked about it. the enemy controller. It's been huge. We saw Steven also main decking enemy controller in his Monotium deck. So at least two of the decks in the top four have main deck copies of enemy controller. We also saw it in the NAWCQ being really prevalent in the Kastira mirror match. And now we're seeing the Rescue Ace mirror match. It's just one of those cards throughout all the time that's just going to be incredible. Like, because it just helps you going second. If you go first, you can still use it to take your opponent's monsters, which is really huge. And it's crazy that a card that's been around for 20 years almost is still having just as much of an impact back then as it does now. In fact, it's probably having more of an impact now than it even did back then. I mean, it's just always been one of my favorite cards. I'll always say it's my favorite card simply because a format where you can activate enemy controller and it's significant means there's a lot of interaction. There's a lot of points where you can get these crazy swings that only enemy controller can really do. And every time that happens, I think there's a lot you can control as a player. Those choices you make make up the world of a difference. And we're seeing that here in this final. Yeah, really. I mean, it's the tech choices that are always matter the most. And I'm one of those players also that likes to tech my deck out with like things that are going to help me going second, things that you're not going to expect. Like you can also you can always go into a tournament and be like, oh, this is the best deck. I'm going to play this version that I found online that someone just got first place at a regional with. I'm just going to copy it because it already had success, and I'm just going to try and play with it. But the big thing is you you can't. There's nothing problem in copying someone else's deck list and playing with it. But you got to play a lot of games with it. Don't expect it just to be good because someone else did well with it. You have to learn why those cards are in there. Why you each one takes up each slot, why the ratios are the way they are. And by playing it out, you'll figure out the things that you like personally, things that'll help you learn how to play. So deck building comes through practice. I'm one of those players, I'm playing game after game after game. I don't really like this card. I'm gonna swap it out and try a different card, see how this was in my hand. And I'll keep doing it every game. Even sometimes when I'm play testing in the middle of the games, I'll be like, you know, I was thinking about this being a different card. And then I'll switch it out and I'll be like, okay, yeah, now it's good. <laughs> Seems a little weird, but when you're playtesting, you just want to see what it's like opening up with specific cards. There's a lot of ways you can playtest and learn about those tech choices where you can take the list from other people that had success with it, but put your own personal spin onto it. Yeah, so you like just being inspired. You don't want to take their word for it. You want to just see where it goes with it and then make those changes for yourself. You really want to experiment with the card yourself before you just commit to what other people do. Just because it's worked for other people doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to work for you. But it worked for them before, so there's a reason it worked, and you just want to figure out those reasons and work from there. 
Yeah, definitely. It sounds like we're swapping out batteries on the laptop for the judges, so we're just going to take a few more minutes to wait and see what that's going to be before we finish our YCS here in Indianapolis. I mean, we're right before the close right now. Oh, yeah. right before the close. We're literally moments, probably seconds away from this game probably finishing, but that's okay. You know, it just happened at that moment. I was like building up Steven. I could see it coming. I was like, he's the man, and then... But you now we get to talk about, I'm going to just give you tips on how to become a better player. That's what I'm always looking at, trying to teach people how to work. It's a lot of its mentality going into tournaments. Like, just because the deck is the best deck doesn't mean it's the best deck. The person playing it has to know it in and out. You have to know all the matchups. You have to play with all the decks. If you try everything out, you won't be surprised by anything. That was always my biggest thing. If I'm playing at a YCS, I don't want to play around and be like, what does that do? I don't want to have to reach over and read the card unless I'm double checking text. I want to be prepared. I want to have played that situation, this scenario, a hundred times. I want to see my hand and I'll be like, oh, I know when I draw this, this, and this together, this is going to be my play. Oh, when my opponent's opening board is this, this is how I'm going to play it out. And the only way to do that is by practice, practice, practice. I'll tell you the most success I've had in my career during those time periods, I was hitting OTSs every week, multiple times a week. I was going to an OTS Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, sometimes Friday even. I think five to seven days a week. The more you play, the more you get to, I mean, it sounds simple, but really practice makes perfect. Yeah, you just want to play as much as you can. It's not necessarily always easy to play seven days a week. You just want to get as much quality testing as you can. Just make sure you play and really take advantage of as much you can learn from those losses as you do your wins. All right, looks like we are close to getting back into the game. This is the game state. So let me just break it down for you since we've been gone for a minute. So currently, Steven, he has Hita, he has Hydrant, Airlifter, Hydrant, a face down back, a Rescue Ace HQ, a couple cards in hand, including Ash Blossom. Logan has a 0-0 zero, zero token. Yes. The, the, <laughs> big, the, the big thing you want to pay attention to for Logan that uh, Steven still has to take care of because it is in main phase two. He's not going to be able to go for a game here, but this is exactly what I was talking about. You have to go for the snake eye in the grave, which means he's not going to be able to use, or actually, no, it banishes, right? So he's going to be able to use wanted to put it back to uh, exactly the bottom of the deck, but he's not going to be able to use it to add a level one back to them. So you're cutting him off a little bit from all the resources that he could have available to him, but we are now finally being able to put that second rescue ace monster in the graveyard, so we're able to banish it. May be careful not to use as a opponent's hydrant, putting a rescue ace monster back in his opponent's graveyard and forcing him to do another card, but he's able to get those four cards back, and now the hydrant's resolved. Again, eight cards. Yes. So we're, we're just one effect away this whole time. We're two effects, but now Logan's yeah. going to draw. This is his last uh, turn. He's going to check his graveyard. He has emergency. He doesn't have any traps. He he's banished the original sinful spoil snake eye. He's not going to have that draw. He, he drew preventer, it looks like. Okay, it looks like he didn't have or the turbulence. wanted. I can't tell what he drew. It's, turbul it's turbulence. turbulence. Yeah. So he's going to banish you to summon turbulence. I imagine you just use extinguish on that immediately. I will right. Yep, destroy it. And then a zero zero token. Ah, oh, now he's not even going to swing oh, win with it. All right, this is it, Steven. He won a YCS already this past year. Uh, he okay, won the World's Steven. Points Playoff. I'm just starting from the top again. He team. was in top I eight of the World that. Championship just a few Almost months up. ago, and now know. here he is with six monsters on the field. The attack from Hydra, attack from the rest of the monsters. That's going to do it. Finally over. Steven, Steven is your two-time YCS champion and Win. YCS Indianapolis champion. Congratulations, Steven Santoli. You've had an incredible year, and now you are a two-time YCS champion. It's been an amazing tournament, and Rescue Ace is going to be the deck to take it down with the Sinful Spoils package. Diabelle Star making a huge impact this weekend. Asia Overlord in everyone's deck that pretty much competed in the room this weekend. And Steven Santoli is the champion after what an epic long weekend.